the Robin Hood IP hasn't been used much in gaming. So how does an action RPG city builder manager painted in Sherwood Forest thematics work? Watch on and find out. My name is Thorax, and this is Strategy for Busy People. If you've got a few minutes, I'll tell you what to play. We like city builders here on Strategy for Busy People. That means we're always excited to see something new. Without looking into it much, I saw a game called Robin Hood Sherwood Builders that involved, well, building and the Robin Hood world. So I figured I would give the title for Mean Astronauts and Console Labs SA a try. I put just under six hours into trying to figure it out. There are actually quite a few flavors of the Robin Hood IP. As a kid growing up in the 90s, Men in Tights is probably one of my favorite renditions of the franchise. However, this particular game's inspiration seems to come strongly from the 2018 film theme. Or at least, that's how it seems to me. Things start off simple enough. You've just escaped from the sheriff and have secluded yourself away in the forest. Since this is a builder, you, as Robin Hood, are in charge of ensuring the success of your little village. But because this is also an action RPG, you are going to have to go around and do quests that will advance the storyline. That storyline, which you should expect from a Robin Hood title, is to defeat the sheriff and or the king, and to rob from the rich and give to the poor, more or less. But I don't know how that works out for various reasons. The first reason is that this title is still in early access, and apparently the full game isn't actually there yet. But the second reason is that this game is a horrendous and awful grind. And there are a lot of annoying little issues, and a few other nits to pick. As far as action RPGs go, the combat is interesting enough, and it involves the all-too-common trope now of various combos and special moves. Certain slashing and literal special attack sequences can be, uh, combined into combos. Yeah. And that's all well and good. There's a little bit of Souls-ish tinge to things, as some execution and timing is required, and certain motions can't be stopped once started. And none of that is bad on its own. There are some cool counterattack things you can do, and some dodging, too. The sword play is good enough. Then, of course, as Robin Hood, you also have a bow and arrows. And there is something entertaining about endlessly retreating or running off a short bit to turn around and unleash a never-ending volley of arrows into your opponents. Somehow, though, the combat is just, well, wildly unfulfilling. Maybe it's a problem with quest escalation or no real indication of level suitability or what I don't know. But... For any actual quest, it seemed like I was always hopelessly outmatched in a head-on fight, and I just needed to run around slash away in order to succeed. Also, unsurprisingly for a Robin Hood title, stealth is a key element of the game. Sneaking around, execution attacks from behind, all of these things are there. But somehow, they too end up seeming more annoying than fun. I'm not entirely sure why. There is an interesting slow motion mode you can enter into, which allows you to operate at nearly full speed while the world around you is almost paused. This is pretty cool the first time or two you use it, especially when trying to take down a deer for some meat. But I don't think I ever used it in combat with other people, and frankly, I'm not sure how useful or helpful it would have been given all the other things I've mentioned thus far. The quests are all grindy affairs, and the main storyline dumps you into a quest early on that requires a skill, Tracker 1, but doesn't tell you how to get it. It turns out that you have to build the Trapper's Hut in order to learn that skill, so let's talk about the building for a bit. Since the game takes place in a forest, wood features prominently. This is also essentially a survival crafting game, as managing your personal hydration and food is important. You gather wood and stuff, and you can build homes to get residence for your settlement. Homes are built literally on trees, the big ones. And then you can clear out little trees to make room to build more buildings for your settlement. But it's often unclear what a building actually does or provides for you. Mention the trapper's hut providing the tracker skill, But this is super duper weird, because you have a skill tree, 
and you can't learn this tracking skill from the regular skill tree. Huh? And, as is frequently my problem with things like skill trees, you have no idea what any of the skill paths are going to do, and there's no indication that you can respec easily or not if you don't like what you've done. Choosing skills becomes either a frustrating exercise in making horrible mistakes and needing to start over, or waiting for someone else to suffer but post on YouTube what their build was and then just copying it. Uh -huh. But back to building for a moment. That sucks too because you need to gather all these specific resources to construct a structure, and those resources are strewn about and not necessarily easily obtained. There are vendors in each of the settlement areas, your own included, but not all vendors sell all things. So you get lucky that the home village vendor sells the bamboo or whatever that you need to build such and such a building, but then if you want a silver to build the lumber mill so that you don't have to scavenge as much for pine and other wood, well, I never figured out where silver was and I had to troll the game's primary discord to even figure out what the lumber mill did. The quests are all extremely typical, but I can't entirely fault the developers for that. There just aren't that many unique quests that you can put in an RPG these days. They all fall under the same tropes of find thing or person, gather thing, investigate, whatever. Each quest or task is painted heavily with a Robin Hood brush, but that ends up actually being wildly overdone. There is just too much dialogue in most cases. Although, one interaction with a beggar seems to make fun of both the game and the entire genre of quest-based action RPGs. That was at least refreshing. Before I give my final verdict, take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to share with your friends. Agree with me? Disagree with me? Or want to see other content? Let me know in the comments below. Want to try this game yourself? Check out my humble affiliate link below. And if you want to support me in making more of these videos, become a patron on Patreon. Your support really makes a difference. The final verdict. There are some refreshing and unique tidbits scattered about Sherwood Forest in this game. Ultimately, it just didn't add up to a whole lot of fun. The nearly six hours I put into the game felt like a constant grind, and once I figured out the main tropes and actions in the game, I realized that it wasn't likely to ever be much more fun. Not all management games are super grindy, and not all RPGs have never-endingly grindy quests. It just left me wanting more. On my trademarked three-point score scale of avoid, meh, and I forgot to eat, I made plenty of roast dough, but even in the game itself, that meal is not that fulfilling. It's just okay. It might get better, but I don't think it's because she turned me into a newt. Oh, wait, that's the wrong franchise. Sorry, Grail.